What's the saddest thing to hear, it's okay, I'm used to it, as a response to? Had a friend who was really lonely and his old friends were awful to him. Like, there was this one girl who would just hit him and stuff and emotionally abuse him really bad. But he didn't have any other friends, so he just stuck with it. Accidentally hit him lately or something when he said, It's okay, I'm used to it. And I felt so bad for the poor guy. He's fine now, though. My son talking about how his mother, my ex-wife, talks to him. During our marriage, she would take everything out on me, whether it was my fault or not. Too busy at work? Shout at me. Her family's coming to visit. Shout at me. Now we're apart, and she does the same thing to him. He moves between both houses by his own choice. Last week, she told him, You might as well leave. As you would imagine, he was very upset. When he got to my place, he was making excuses for her and actually said, It's okay, I'm used to it. I've never spoken badly about his mother to any of my children until now. I've been talking to him since then that she used to do this to me and that it's actually not okay. He spent a lot of time considering what I've been saying. He's 20 and has said that he's going to have a discussion with her about it. I hope she acts like as much of an adult as he is, but I don't like the chances of that. The one time a girl ever asked me out in my life, back in high school. I told her, sorry, I just met a girl I really like and we're starting to get serious, so I can't right now. And her answer to that was, it's okay, I'm used to it. No one ever picks me first. Or something like that. I felt absolutely terrible, because usually back then, that would have been my line. Preface, my boyfriend has lost his mom, both of his uncles, and his step-grandfather. All separate instances. Literally last Sunday night at midnight, my boyfriend woke me up to tell me that one of his really good friends from high school died. He was so upset and I was so sad for him. I told him how sorry I was for him because I honestly didn't even know what to say. His response? It's okay. I'm used to it. In the saddest tone I've ever heard. I started crying. How freaking heartbreaking. When you're volunteering at the homeless shelter and they have to turn someone out on a cold winter night because the facility is maxed out, the person with tears says, it's okay, I'm used to it. Oh, guys, this is going to be a rough one to get through. I had a roommate after college that unfortunately slipped back into a pill problem. I came back to the apartment one evening with my mom to find my roommate passed out on the floor and incoherent. I was freaking out the entire time, but my mom was incredibly calm and knew exactly what to do. Afterwards, she told me, I used to have to do that all the time with my dad. My mom grew up with an alcoholic father who ended up dying of his disease, so she had been through a lot. But I really had no idea how bad it had been for her until then. I still get a little choked up thinking about her face in that moment. This won't be a very popular opinion unless you've really been through it, but when people constantly interrupt you, especially when it's by people that you love. It's one thing when it's a lively and interesting conversation. Then, I get it. But even in just normal, everyday communication, after asking so many people to stop with no avail, it gets to the point where you know nobody is really listening or cares what you have to say. I'm almost just tired of talking. But it's okay. I'm used to it. When I was in 10th grade, there was this freshman girl who had a pretty nice body in my photography class. Sometimes when she walked by the back table, like three or four of the guys there would slap her butt, and she would just keep walking solemnly. One day, I took her aside so no one was in earshot and asked her why she just lets them do that to her. And she said, it's fine, I've had to deal with it since I was in middle school from them. This one makes me legitimately angry, guys. Anyone out there dealing with this kind of thing? This is absolutely not appropriate, under any means. Do not feel that you need to accept this kind of behavior. There's always someone willing to help you in this situation. And if you're the one doing this and think it's funny, shame on you. When my boss told me a few weeks ago that I haven't been getting enough quotes to him and maybe this sales job isn't for me, but you're really a nice guy. I could not tell you how many times I've had someone say something negative followed up with, but you're a really nice guy. Not quite it's okay, I'm used to it, but pretty close. I'll listen to a friend of mine who has ADHD and Asperger's talk about his D&D stories and he'll go on for a bit and then suddenly stop and say, sorry, I'm rambling. And you just know that he's been told to shut up or stop talking so many times now that he's used to having to stop talking because someone got frustrated with him rambling. 
Makes me sad that someone would tell this guy to shut up when he's clearly enjoying explaining his wild universes. Passion like that shouldn't be stifled. Constantly having different utilities cut off and multiple eviction threats from the landlord and a large possibility of becoming homeless in the near future because whoever you live with would rather stock up on liquor than save for rent and bills. That seems almost too specific. I was walking into Walmart the other day when I saw a woman in her early 60s in a wheelchair trying to push herself up a hill against the wind with a basket on her lap. I said to her, pardon me, I don't mean to be rude, but would you like a hand? And she said, oh no, it's all right, I'm used to it. I felt so guilty for how much I take my legs for granted. What a trooper she was. This kid I had in an after school program was supposed to be picked up by his dad for the weekend. Basically talked all Friday about how much fun they were going to have. Well, Monday came and I found out the dad never showed. The kid seemed fine though, and when I tried to get if he was really okay... He said, It's okay, I should be used to this by now. Also another kid I babysit, her mom is supposed to call on Sunday nights but skips many of them and just calls whenever she pleases really, and gets mad at the kid for not answering while in school. I asked her about it and she said it doesn't bother her cause she's just so used to her mom being flaky and not calling at the agreed upon time. Why do deadbeat parents like that constantly gas up their kids and then let them down? If you're going to be a disappointment as a father, at least don't get the kids hopes up when you know you're not going to follow through. My mom has some strong letting go issues since she had a rough childhood that resulted in her not letting me go to birthday parties, sleepovers, playdates, etc. when I was younger because she was afraid something was going to happen or that I would somehow embarrass myself for life. Around the third grade, we had a new kid in class, and when it came around to birthday parties, everyone but me got an invite. The new kid noticed this after a while and was offended for me. When asked why I wasn't upset, I just stated that I was used to it. Even if I had gotten an invite, I would not be allowed to go. Eighth grade teacher here. I have a student who recently told me that her mom cries every night as she goes through the week's budget trying to work out how much they can afford to eat that week. I asked her if she ever went hungry, because as her teacher it's my duty to escalate when a child isn't having basic needs met, and whether she wanted to see the school counselor about the crying. Her response to both questions was, it's okay, I'm used to it. It was honestly the most heartbreaking thing I'd ever heard. Later on, I found out that this girl only had half a buttered sandwich each day at school, which was to last her through recess and lunch and always went to the library to read during breaks because she wanted to conserve her energy. All the teachers just thought she was a bookworm. In actual fact, she longed for friends, but hadn't made any because they were all running around in the playground. We don't get a conclusion to this story, but I really hope the teacher followed through on making sure all the child's needs were met. I used to nanny this really sweet girl. In kindergarten or the first grade, the girl that sat next to her in class died in a freak accident. She'd recently, within the year or so, just lost grandparents, animals, and a family friend. I asked her how she was handling the loss of her friend and she responded, I'm okay, I'm used to losing people close to me. Broke my heart. I work at Toys R Us. The saddest thing is a child who knows they're not the favorite saying that they get one $10 toy and their sibling gets many toys, all of which are over that price. I was like, oh, is it your brother's birthday? To this little girl who was getting one little doll when her brother was getting Nerf guns and video games. She looked at me and went, mom and grandma buy him everything he wants. I'm used to it. A story for a similar phrase. It's just easier this way. Cousin was getting married at her stepdad's ranch house and invited everybody, including her father and us. They had one of those through the years photo albums on the TV playing throughout the night. Despite the fact that her father raised her in a loving home till she was 16, there were absolutely no photos of her father anywhere in the video. Multiple people on both sides noticed. She was eventually confronted about it and said that it was put together by her mother and it wasn't worth arguing over. She then had her stepdad walk her down the aisle in front of her father. Nurses, doctors, and healthcare workers getting the living snot kicked out of them by violent abusive people in the hospital, and the police doing absolutely nothing about all of it. I did security in an emergency ward, and I really was not prepared for how violent it was. Also, I was not prepared for how little the police did. It was practically impossible to get them to show up, and on the extremely rare occasions they did, 
They never arrested anyone. I remember the first day I was filling out an incident report where a nurse got knocked down flat. I'm apologizing to her saying that I'd been on the phone and can't even get the police to show up. And she said, that's okay, I'm used to it and you better get used to it too. Wanting to hang out with someone and either they already have plans or you later find out they did something fun with your group of friends and they didn't invite you. Now I'll usually say, it's fine, go have fun, slash, glad you had fun, but it's not really fine. I've just gotten used to it. My mom had a stillborn daughter when I was in the 8th grade. A few years later, she tried again and got pregnant with triplet boys. One of them had developmental issues and apparently caused issues for the other two, and they were also stillborn. My sister and I felt horrible at the thought of losing so many siblings, and even worse for what our mom was going through all over again. Our stepdad was broken inside. He really wanted children of his own, and we all knew that. It's not that he loved us any less. He's a great man, just that he always wanted to raise a child. A few years later, my mom got pregnant totally by accident. We were all talking one day and it slipped by my sister. What if it happens again? My mom's face got this really distant look and she just said, It's okay, I'm used to it. I had to get up and go to the other room because I didn't want to be seen crying. However, there is a happy ending. Our little sister was born healthy, minor birth complications needing an immediate c-section which terrified us, but she's six now and a bundle of energy that can rival any tornado. She's the accidental miracle and the best thing that's happened to the family. I'm really glad we got to get a happy ending squeezed somewhere in here. I knew this girl for like 10 years because of Girl Scouts, but didn't become real good friends until high school. I'd never had a sleepover with her outside of Girl Scout activities, and the first time I slept over, I could hear her dad screaming at her brothers for not cleaning up the game room and some other stuff and then screaming at his wife, my Girl Scout leader, for whatever the boys did or didn't do. I was so scared, and my friend just kind of ignored it. I was like, wow, he sounds really upset. Are your brothers okay? And she basically told me it was a normal occurrence in her house. I remember walking out to go to the bathroom, and one of her brothers, who likes to act like a tough guy, was crying. Crying and cleaning the bathroom. I always had a weird feeling about her dad. Like, he liked to act like the good, funny, suburban Christian dad when everyone was around. But even when I was young, I felt like he was really condescending. No one in that family deserved that sort of treatment from him. One of the brothers had been adopted a few years prior from China, and I felt like he was so unfortunate to have such a horrible dad and a brother who took things out on him because he felt like crap too. Anyways, the saddest thing is when you learn your friends have one or two crappy parents who act horrible and they're so used to being screamed at all the time. For me, the saddest moments are when they can still have a normal expression while saying it. If someone says I'm used to it while crying, it kind of means they're not really used to it. There was a kid in my class when I was around 8 years old that was really unpopular because he was poor and often got bullied. After a while, he found his place, as the guy that does stupid stuff and hurts himself to try and fit in. There was actually a toughness session, but in reality it was just people beating the ever-loving crap out of him while he just stood there without reacting, as well as him putting out cigarettes using his arms and hands. Even let people whip him with long thin branches while not reacting at all, just so he could fit in and have friends. I remember the teacher finding out and getting so incredibly angry at everyone and started yelling at our entire class in the middle of the class. He straight up begged her to stop blaming people as he'd finally found what he called friends. Anyway, she told him to pull up his sleeves and there were bloody whip marks, bruises and burns all over his arms. The guy just looks at her with a smile and says that he's used to it and he's really happy. The teacher straight up starts to cry and pull him out of the class. Didn't see him for a long time after that because he got placed in a foster home and as it turns out, he actually was used to it because he'd been beaten at home for as long as he could remember. Now that I'm older, I realize just how heartbreaking it would be to see a tortured 8 year old boy act all happy because he managed to get fake friends by being beaten repeatedly. Nerve damage in my back. I've seen quite a few high level doctors about it. Just went to see the last one before I knew there was nothing else I could do and know that it would never heal and I would be stuck this way forever. It was the first appointment my parents actually went to with me. 
in my mid-twenties and don't live at home, but I guess after a few years, they were frustrated that I had never gotten any help. After a few hours there in a nerve conduction study that lasted almost three hours, no change. Nothing they can do to help. My mom and dad were upset when the doctor, seeming genuinely sorry, said there was nothing they could do. Having seen lots of doctors before this who all responded the same way over the last two years, I responded something like, it's okay doctor, I figured that's what you'd say. Just wanted to get a final opinion. Which sent my parents over the edge. I guess they expected something to happen or some magic surgery to exist. Not to be told by an expert, sorry, nothing we can do. And for me to be so nonchalant about it, it sucks, but I'm used to it. My stepdaughter came home from her boyfriend's house complaining of a headache. When I asked a few more questions, she finally told me he'd hit her really hard in the back of the head, had a big goose egg sized lump and a scab. I was horrified and asked why is she even still with him after that? She just said, it's okay, I'm used to it. I wish I could do something to help with her self-esteem, but no matter what I tell her or how much I care about her, she needs to figure out how to love herself. When I was 15 or 16, my friends told this really, really big girl that I liked her as a joke. It was crappy, but she believed them. I flagged her down after gym class to tell her the truth, and when I did, she goes, yeah, it's okay. People don't ever have feelings for me. I'm used to pranks like this. I distinctly remember punching my friend that did that in the chest like six or seven times during study hall the next period. It was heartbreaking. When I was 19 and dating my current partner, I was squatting in an abandoned, flea-infested, decaying house while I scraped by on food stamps and working eight hours a week because my job was cutting everyone. A friend offered to let me move in with them for a while, but didn't want me to bring my best friend and last member of my family, my cat. I tried to take him to an animal rescue place, but the attendant decided that my cat was too aggressive after he manhandled him pretty hard. As I sat in my partner's car and held my cat's crate close to my heart, he lamented to me how unfair this all was and how he knew my cat meant everything to me, and how our only option seemed to be to take him to the shelter that told me point blank that if I took a cat there, they would kill him. I looked at him, full of despair at the thought that I had failed my little buddy, who had been my constant companion through deaths and abandonment and homelessness, and honestly stated, it's okay, I'm used to it. To me, it was Tuesday. To him, he was witnessing the saddest thing he had ever seen happening to someone he was quickly falling in love with, and he began to cry. I was so surprised by his reaction because why would anyone cry over me or my problems? The good news is my friend changed their mind and I got to keep him. And when I eventually moved in with my partner, he let me take him even though he's deathly allergic to cats. And we found ways to work around it for a number of years until my cat eventually passed away due to natural causes. I miss my little buddy, my constant companion, every day. But I'm so thankful I got the time with him that I did. I know how many people hate on cats and say they're horrible. But that cat was everything to me, the adorable little rascal. And he loved me in a way that I believe few people in this world get to experience from an animal. I'm that guy who always seems to be on the edge of friend groups, or at least I used to. I was that one who always got talked over by other people, or people wouldn't realize I was talking at all. I was just used to being that guy, the one who was just kind of there. Got to college and found a group of friends that I really do interact with, and it's amazing how different that is. Basically, whenever nobody bothers to learn how to say someone's name properly, especially if it's unusual or exotic for the area, it's a basic unit of respect in acknowledging someone as a person, learning to say their name correctly. I have a really unusual first and last name, and a lot of people who have known me for years, coworkers, etc., still don't say it correctly, despite multiple corrections. So I'm super conscientious of making sure I pronounce other people's names correctly. Often, the response I get is a very surprised and grateful, no one ever tries, which is pretty similar to I'm used to it. I have a happy one to counterbalance such heartbreaking stories. I often go in the forest and dogs run up to me and want to jump up. I don't have the heart to say no because they look so happy to see me. The owners are always so embarrassed as I'll get a little money, but I tell them I work with animals, so I'm used to it. Met some great dogs this way. Yes, we get to end on a happy one, and there are dogs in it. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. 
Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.